Hi, so in video 1083 we began to talk about graphene production methods and we focused in that video on the chemical methods. It was brush stroke but it focused on the chemical methods. What we're going to do now is focus on the mechanical methods because there are basically three methods, chemical, mechanical and electrochemical. We've looked at chemical, we're going to look at the mechanical. Now the original experiment that Nobokov and Gein did was really very basic stuff. They took themselves a lump of this stuff, this is Sri Lankan vein graphite actually, and a bit of this stuff, some sticky tape. Now any sticky tape will do this. You can use sellotape or you can use packing tape just like I'm doing. You can lay it on the surface of your graphite, pick it off. What you'll get is chunks of graphite, obviously. Now graphite, remember, is just a big stack of graphene. If we can get those chunks down to a single layer, hey, we'll have graphene. And what Nobokov and Geim did was that. And that peeled it in half. Then you get another piece and you peel it half and you keep on going. After a couple of hundred rolls of sellotape, you will have graphene on there. And that's what won them the Nobel Prize. But unfortunately, of course, it's not much use apart from staring at it in a microscope and winning Nobel Prizes. Not a lot you can do with that. But it is essentially a shear method. We're shearing off the layers. Now, this got the attention and interest of the Japanese. And the Japanese had to think about that. Because, of course, you don't only have to get graphite in these beautiful lumps like this. You can get graphite, quite simply, in this. So a pencil, remember, is just actually clay and graphite. And if I draw on a piece of paper, what I'm doing is making a shear method. Now, the paper's quite rough. The graphite shears off and leaves you that line, and it's another shear method of creating graphene. Now, it's not graphene at this stage, it's too thick still, so it's still graphite. We have to do something to lower that level of stacks, so the stacks get thinner down to graphene. And what they did was take a bit of this stuff, some graphite powder, and you take a tiny, tiny bit, sprinkle it on, and grab yourself some sandpaper. I'm kind of giggling because it is really obvious stuff. So I've got a sandpaper block here and the Japanese used 4000 grade. And what you do is that. That's it. You do that a few times, keeping it clean, very little, and you'll get a graphene coated plastic layer. They don't have to use sandpaper actually, lots of things will do it. We've used uh, wool, we've used uh, cotton, we've used sandpapers, and we've even used paper just by rubbing it with a bit of paper then you set up a difference in electrostatic attraction. The graphene gets stuck to the plastic and the rest comes off on the paper and you end up with a layer of graphene. You probably can't see that because it is an invisible layer of graphene laying on the top of the plastic. Now, we did lots of videos on this where we used this for all kinds of stuff, including touch sensors uh, and generation. We used it as a uh, way of generating electricity. And it's, uh, heating mats we also used it as. Very easy, very useful way of making yourself large sheets of graphene. But it comes stuck to the plastic. And of course, that in itself isn't something you might want. You might want basically a big tub of graphene that you can apply in other things like concrete. Now, it's the Irish, really, who took it that one step further. This is courtesy of Trinity College Dublin. What they did was take that idea of shearing things off, and rather than doing it manually with sticky tape or sandpaper, they used one of these things. It's just a household blender. They filled this with a mixture of alcohol, water and washing up liquid and put some graphene in there, stuck it on there for absolutely ages, and of course everything whizzing around meant that it was sheared off. Those flakes were shearing away, and after a couple of hours or so they got themselves graphene, and we did a replication of that in another video as well. That graphene now is in solution. Now that slight problem with the Trinity method is that that's all a bit harsh. It does shear it, but it's very high shear. So what it tends to do is fracture the graphene into small plates. Now this is where the Americans come in. They had a look at what Gaim was doing. They had a look at this shear methodology and thought, hang on a second, what about if we put the graphene in some glue and then shear it gently? Now this is a three roll mill. A three roll mill has three rollers that turn at different speeds. So where those rollers meet, right here, there are quite high shear forces, but no impact. In the Trinity College, everything's hitting into each other, and so you get a reasonably high impact. Here, you've got extremely low impact, but very high shear. The glue, obviously, holds it in the same way the sellotape would, and as those rollers go round and round, it peels off. And just like a cosmetic, you have a little tray here, 
everything gets scraped off so you end up with glue and graphene in a tub and that was one of the contributions the Americans made to the whole thing. Now in there were a whole lot of experiments with these things. This is a ball mill. Now the original Trinity of course was high shear. This one actually is medium impact, medium shear. It's full of balls, the balls roll around and that's where you get shear from but they also ride to the top and drop down and bash into each other and that's where you get your impact from. Now this is obviously a um, ball mill for polishing stones but you get all kinds of ball mills including things like the Wretched 100. Just amazing stuff actually where you can change that range from high shear, low impact, low impact, high shear by changing the media, changing the speed and changing the direction of the ball mill. But these ball mills were used extensively with various mixtures in them in order to shear out because remember this mechanical method is all about shearing off the flakes. Now we looked at ball mills of course but then dropping back down again is kind of detrimental to the size of your graphene flakes so what we did was take the ball mill from that direction where we would get the drop down to the rotation to that direction and we put a stirrer in there. Now as we stir those beads around and around there is no impact it's all low shear and what we did was we put some graphite in there with some uh, glycerin, which was basically the glue, and just turned it for ages, low shearing off the graphene until we got a mixture of gra uh, graphene and glycerin. Because the glycerin is much easier to separate than something like a solid glue. Yet another method based on shear to shake off those plates is this thing, it's a sonicator. This one's a bath sonicator. You can get them as horn sonicators where they just stand by themselves and you stick them in a beaker. But basically they create a high frequency vibration sound which jiggles everything about and bashes it off and shakes the stuff off by shearing it off. So sonication is yet another one of those mechanical methods based on impact and shear. Now you can begin this journey using graphite if you like, but of course in graphite those layers are fairly closely attached to each other. It's all very much easier if you use this stuff. This is exfoliated graphite and I showed you how to make this in 1083. And if you start with this, because it's all spread apart so much more, all of these methods are actually much, much easier to achieve with something like exfoliated graphite. And of course you'll find research on that. Anyway, that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour on mechanical methods of creating graphene and they're all pretty much based on impact and shear. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will be covering electrochemical methods and thank you very much for watching.